Usually I introduce a song with some scripture, and I want to read a couple of scriptures today. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, for His wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt Him also in the congregation of the people and praise Him in the assembly of the elders. <clears throat> Jesus said this, Whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat or he that serveth, is he not that sitteth at meat? But Jesus said, I am among you as one that serveth. Let those, Jesus said, let those sayings sink down into your ears. Amen? That's what he told the disciples and the Pharisees of the day. We have been given a gift. Faithful minister. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, this world that you, we're passing through, we're here just for a short time, is not about fear. It's about exalting the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Should we gather in His name? Always. Amen. Because He is Lord of glory. Amen? Amen? It is Him that brings us to His house, to His presence. Amen? For my God, the Lord Jesus Christ is here. I assure you He is because I brought Him with me. Amen. Let me straighten that out and say He brought me with Him. Right? That's how this thing works. It is the goodness of God that brings us to repentance. Amen. He's the one that brings us to His bosom. Hallelujah. Is He worthy to be worshipped? Always. Always. As I walk through the door, I sensed His presence, and I knew this was the place where love abounds. For this is the temple. Jehovah God Almighty, we are standing in His presence on holy ground. We are standing.
Jesus came and said, because I live, so shall you live. Amen. If you put on that sacred blood of our Savior. Amen. As I told you last week, I had had a, a very vivid two-part dream. And I shared the first part of it with you last week. But the, the second part was when I walked into this sanctuary, I was going to preach on one particular passage of the Bible and when I opened the Bible that I was carrying it wasn't even in there it had been torn out and so I went right back over to my office and I got my mother's Bible right there she died five years ago last thing she coherently told me was take care of the church and so I'm going to tell you this morning what was ours is ours again and it will never be taken away from us again. If they want me, I got five other pastors that will step right up and fill in while I'm gone. And then after that, we'll go get the deacons because half of them deacons can preach better than I can. <laughs> Peter said we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Because that's who we're going to answer to ultimately. Amen. What we did. Well, I opened my mother's old Bible. She was old school as they come. And it said in Amos chapter 8, Behold, the days are coming, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And I'm seeing it everywhere. Churches have gone from preaching the word of God to knitting masks to give out to people. And doing all kinds of social work, but not preaching the gospel. Now the church is suffering persecution by the enemies of God, and the enemies are within our own gates. We don't have to worry about foreigners coming over here and persecuting the church. Our own people are doing it. Never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. I preached on it. For years, and y'all know I did, but I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime, and here it is, we're right in the middle of it. But there are reasons that that happened. One of them is the church joined the world instead of separating from it. One of the biggest problems, and you know it yourself, we would find so many excuses not to attend the house of God on Sunday morning because of all the entertainment that was out there for us. And then we wonder why we're not strong when persecution comes along. The doctrines of the Bible, and it's all in there. They were not being taught and all we were getting was social justice sermons and feel good sermons and nobody would tell you about your sin. Amen. Then when person, that's right. I love the sound of a baby. Let me tell you something, a baby hollering in church does not bother solid rock. Praise God for babies in church. We want as many as we can get and, and a bunch of our ladies are, are having them fast as they can. <laughs> Long as the world tarries, we need babies. Amen. They are the church of today, not the church of tomorrow. Let them come. Amen. The doctrines of the Bible were being substituted for feel-good sermons. If you come out of this sanctuary feeling good about yourself, I have not done my job. 
Half the time I feel like I need to be down there first before the rest of y'all. But we have substituted the doctrines of the Word of God. And that's why people are left to think like sheep. People will believe anything that somebody will tell them because they're not grounded in the Word of God. And so when the government thought they could take jurisdiction over God's people and God's house, it was an easy mark. The church has forgotten the words that Peter said when he was commanded not to preach in the name of Jesus and he was thrilled that they would honor him with that. And he said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Our nation was founded by Christians mostly. And our laws were written on Christian principles right out of the word of God. What happened? What did we do to allow that to slide and we turned our heads? All I know is that churches everywhere, and ours included, needs to repent. We need to repent. David longed for the courts of the temple. That's all he wrote about. Oh, if I could just spend a day there, it'd be worth a thousand days anywhere else. And I used to wonder, why in the world is David saying that? Until we didn't have it anymore. Oh, no, not again. No, no, no. It feels so good to be in here with y'all. To feel the presence of the Spirit Amen. and the fellowship. And I understand that we've taken God's house for granted. We've taken God's people for granted. We've taken God's word for granted. And I hope it has taught us a lesson never to ever do that again. David said here in Psalm 64... Hear my voice, O oh God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Oh, buddy, fear can do some strange things to you, can't it? Fear can make you stupid. Fear can make you just run flat. You go in the supermarket, people are flattening up against the wall like you got the plague for crying out loud. There's so many masks on, it looks like I'm in a Klan rally. I told somebody, if you see me going in a store with a mask on, it ain't to shop. I'm going to raise us some vacation Bible school money. That's what I'm going to do. Praise God. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. There are people in your own neighborhood that want to sell you out and get you arrested for having church. Have you ever heard of anything that insane? What is this, the United States of America or the People's Republic of America? The church had better get right because God is the only one that can turn this mess around. Don't you depend on no attorney generals and governors and even presidents to do this. The Lord is going to have to do that and his people are going to have to call on him. Amen. He said, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked and from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. They are everywhere and I never realized the depth of the evil and the depths of the sin in this nation until a flu bug came along and people lost their minds. It said these people wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. I have been called every name in the book lately. I'm lawless. I'm careless. I'm selfish. 
I'm this, I'm that. But if preaching the word of God and assembling his people together to worship, if that's what it is, then I plead guilty to all of it. It said these people want to shoot their arrows that they may shoot in secret at the perfect and suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. The wicked have become bold in this nation. There is no fear of God with anybody. They encourage themselves in an evil matter and they commune of laying snares privately and they said who shall see them? Thank God that the Holy Spirit illuminates us and opens our eyes. And let me tell you something, folks. If you can't see what's going on in this nation right now, you need to get saved and you need to get the Holy Spirit within you because he will show you what's going on. That's the problem. We got a lot of churchgoers today that don't get it because they do not know the Lord. There's a lot of people going to hell from the pew of a church. Don't ever make any mistake on that. It's, getting, it's being saved is what counts. Knowing Christ is your Savior. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Listen to this. For all that think they're getting away with wickedness and all that think that they're God your day is coming. But God sh shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. And all that see them shall flee away. The Bible's careful to tell us that the wicked rise into power for a while. But then you'll look around and you can't even find them. I want you to take heart, church, because God is still on his throne. He's not rubbing his chin wondering what he's going to do. He knows what he's going to do. And if you belong to him, fear ought not be in your vocabulary. I know it's tough. I know you get bombarded every day with negative, negative, negative and impossibilities and all this garbage. But don't let your head turn to the right or the left. You keep it straight ahead and you listen to the words of God and pay no attention to what the naysayers are telling you. Because God's got this. God's got this. All men shall fear. And declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. I believe that God's about to bring about a revival in this land. But it's going to be from the people who are not living in fear. And people who are trusting God every minute of their life. And those that will stand on the word of God, plus nothing, minus nothing. But he wants to bring a revival and let it come. Lord, let it come. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him and all of the upright in heart shall glory. Man, I tell you, I feel like somebody that just been let off a death row this morning. Oh my goodness, it's so wonderful to see y'all and to be with y'all and to praise God with y'all. Folks, don't ever take what God has given you for granted ever again. Don't ever allow the world to do that to us. Serving God's going to cost you. It's not, look at what it cost Jesus to save you. And the little that we could, can do for him, that's nothing compared to what he did for us. And so we got to be willing. We got to stick together. We got to pray for one another. Back one another up and make a stand on the word of God, plus nothing, minus nothing, no matter what happens. Don't ever back down. This morning, no doubt there's somebody here that needs prayer. I want you to know if you have never given your life to Christ, he will make a new creature out of you. 
you confess your sins to him and you trust in him to save your soul and put your trust in him and him alone and not your works and not your good deeds and not anything else, you trust him and ask him and he will save you right here. Whatever need you have, if you're not afraid for somebody to pray over you this morning, we're going to invite you to come. If, if you feel a little standoffish, that's all right. You can sit down in your pew and pray, and that's all right, too. But we're going to give an altar call here in just a moment to anybody that has a need for prayer. Shall we stand? As I asked before, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning, church? Amen. I'm excited to sing this song. If you've been at Solid Rock any amount of time, you've probably heard this song before. It's called My Father's House. That was so awesome. It was so awesome. And the Lord is so awesome. And I've got to say all glory and honor and power belong to him. Yes. And I've got a song about that. And that is the battle belongs to the Lord. And it's about all the glory and honor and power and strength to the Lord. Okay, maybe some of you know this song. It's not in your hymnal or anything. I do apologize about that. The chorus goes like this. We sing glory and honor and power and strength to the Lord. We sing glory and honor and power and strength to the Lord. Amen. Okay? So, let's give this a try, okay? So. In heavenly to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory. 
and the power.